Yeah, Father, we're so thankful that we'll never be the same because, because of Jesus, His perfect life, death, and resurrection. We have changed, and we have changed for the good now and for all eternity. Bless us on this Easter Sunday. In Jesus' name we pray. And everyone said, Amen. You may be seated. You know, the most, one of the most important chapters in the Bible is in the New Testament, uh, and it's 1 Corinthians chapter 15, because it talks all about the resurrection of the dead. And there it says, But if Christ has been re raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep, for since death came through a man, the resurrection of the dead comes also through a man. For as in Adam all die, so in Christ all will be made alive. And I'm here to tell you, brothers and sisters, that I'm glad that I am alive in Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen? And you're alive in Christ too because you believe the good news. God the Holy Spirit has worked saving faith in your heart in Jesus Christ. You believe that He actually lived, that He was a true historical figure. You actually believe that He was the perfect Lamb of God. That means that He was without sin. He was without any blemish at all. Not only do you believe that, but you believe that he suffered at the hands of sinful people, the people that he actually made and created. And you believe that he shed his blood for you on a tree, on a cross. And you also believe that you don't deserve his goodness and you don't deserve his grace and you certainly don't forget deserve his forgiveness and you don't deserve heaven either and neither do I and neither does anyone else. We all know what we rightly deserve, don't we? Yeah, we don't deserve to be forgiven. We don't deserve to have a right relationship with God. We don't deserve to check out of this life and live forever in heaven. What we really deserve is what our sins should be getting us, which is hell, which is temporal and eternal punishment. But we worship, believe in, and adore a God who loves us so much. I mean, if you start with Genesis and you start with the fall into sin with Adam and Eve, I mean, they messed it up. They screwed it up for everybody. When Eve took a bite of that apple, they were infected with the sin disease. You know, the virus that's going to kill us all. You probably uh, looked in the mirror today and maybe you said to yourself, probably not, I'm getting a little bit older. And that's because it says in the book of Romans that the wages of sin is death. And so no one's getting out of this earth and off this planet alive. Amen? I mean, no one. That is unless Jesus comes back again, you know, the second coming, the second advent to judge the living and the dead, as we like to confess in the Apostles' Creed. You might still be around when he does that because you never know he's going to come back. That's why you always want to have the passport of faith. You also believe more importantly, more importantly than anything else, that after Jesus died for not only your sins, my sins, and the sins of the whole world, he didn't stay dead. He rose from the dead. And I'm here to tell you today that no one has ever said they were going to die and in three days come back to life again. I like to say that Muhammad never said that. Confucius never said that. Joseph Smith never did that. Um, Anybody who has ever been a religious guru, Jim Guyana, David Koresh, all these other people, self-proclaimed messiahs, have never said, I'm going to die in three days, come back to life again. Only one person said he was going to do it, and only one person did it, and his name was Jesus Christ. He's the second person of the Trinity. He's the God-man. He's the Savior of the world. He's the one who died and rose for all. But not all people have faith in him. And it's critical that we have faith in Him because that's how we get saved. That's how we get sins forgiven. Here's what it says in Romans chapter 10, verse 9. That if you confess with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, say Jesus is Lord. And believe in your heart that God raised Him from the dead, you will be saved. Did you get that part? Believe in your heart that God raised Him from the dead? For it's with your heart that you believe and are justified, and it is with your mouth 
that you confess and are saved. The disciples, they doubted Jesus for so long, really up until the end. Here he is ascending into heaven. There's 11 there because one is checked out, Judas Iscariot. And the scripture says in Matthew chapter 28, they worshiped him, but some doubted. Can you believe that? You have doubts? You have concerns about your future? About your eternity? I think we all struggle with doubts now and then, but I remember that story in the Bible where a guy was struggling with that. And the, he said to Jesus, Lord, I believe, help my unbelief. It's real, isn't it? I believe. I have doubts. Help my doubts. Help my unbelief. Jesus has indeed been raised from the dead. You guys, it is the linchpin of Christianity. You know what a linchpin does? A linchpin keeps the wheel connected to an axle. The linchpin of Christianity is the resurrection. Without the resurrection, the wheel of Christianity falls off the axle. I mean, our faith is futile. It's in vain. It means nothing if Christ has not indeed been raised from the dead. You know, at the beginning of the service when we all confessed our sins, we all did that together, didn't we? Right? And then the pastor turned around and said, you know, in so many words, by grace through faith in Jesus, your sins are forgiven in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. If Christ has not been raised from the dead, that confession and that absolution is meaningless. Any of you guys been baptized? Baptized in the name of the triune God, maybe infant, toddler, teenager, older person. The baptismal font, when the water is applied to the candidate, the recipient, and the word of God is connected to it, when the pastor says, I baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, means absolutely nothing if Christ is not risen from the dead. And you know, you're going to come to the Lord's Supper in a little bit, and you're actually going to receive the very body and blood of Christ. It's not a symbol. It doesn't represent. Jesus said, he didn't say, this represents my body. This represents my blood. This is symbolic of my body. This is symbolic of my blood. It says in 1 Corinthians 11, is not the cup of blessing which we drink a participation in the blood of Christ. It's not the bread that we eat and break a participation in the body of Christ. But if Christ is not risen, you're not receiving the body and blood of Christ for the forgiveness of your sins. But I'm here to tell you that Christ has indeed been raised from the dead. The thing that puts power into the absolution is the word of God. The thing that puts baptism, the power into it is the word. It's the word of Christ spoken over the bread and wine that puts power into it. But what gives it life, what gives forgiveness that gets dispersed to God's holy people is the fact that Jesus is risen from the dead. Amen? And so here's what God wants us to do. He wants us to tell as many people about that as possible. Start with your own brokenness. Start with your own need for a Savior. Start with your own shortcomings, where you've blown it, where you suck, in thought, word, and deed, because that'll connect with people. Too many Christians are seen as self-righteous and pious. Hey, you went to church on Sunday. Let me ask you a question. Are you coming back next Sunday? is what some people might ask you. You want to come back next Sunday because you want the goods. You want the spiritual vitamins. You want to hook yourself up to the IV of God's Word and Sacrament because that's where forgiveness flows. That's where life flows. That's where peace flows and strength flows. That's where God flows into you so that you can keep believing in the one true Christian faith until God calls you home for all eternity and you never know when that's going to happen. It happens to, to toddlers. It happens to teenagers, 20-somethings, 40-somethings, 60-somethings, and 80-somethings. You never know. But you want to have the passport of faith when you go. Or as in Adam all die, you know, Adam, back in the Old Testament, so in Christ all will be made alive. You're alive in Christ. Through His Word, breathe that life into other people. Happy Easter, everybody. God bless you. Amen.